Today is gonna be another install video. I'm showing you guys how to do extended uh, ARP wheel studs and installing new rear wheel bearings, which is the, of course the whole hub. And when we're finished, they're gonna look like this. I kind of recorded that uh, or did that ahead of time. I was in a rush a bit. But what you are going to need, of course, for the rear, when you buy wheel bearings, they only come like this in the hub because I guess that's how they sell them. Or... There we go. And I'm using my 70D today, kind of neglecting it. So. There you go. So that's what the original one looks like. And that's what it looks like with the ARP extended wheel sets. You guys need them for your Hondas. Here's the part number. 1007711 for 962000 but it's all the same shit. And I got the other ones right here, which is for this one. And you don't need that anymore, that's all you need. And of course, you're gonna need some wood. The reason why I say that is so you have the hub floating like this, like that. So you're gonna use that big ass hammer, smack the studs out. It's gonna take a while because these are fresh. So just keep hitting it at a constant pace and it'll come out eventually. And you're gonna need the impact afterwards to impact the studs in using this thing by, I don't know how to say that, Elias Lisley. 22800 is the part number. It's a wheel stud installer. And what this is, let me open this. Oh my God. And I have these two washers. So they go like this. Like that, with that. There you go. And then you use the acorn lug nut, or I use a Muteki or Gorilla. Goes right in and impact it, and the whole stud will come in. I recommend using this because most of the time people don't use this, and then you can end up stripping this, the new stud you're installing. And this has a bearing at the bottom, so it just keeps spitting and it, it won't pretty much mess up the studs that you're installing because I've done it a long time ago and messed up my studs. And I have this just to space it out for the fronts when you do the fronts. Because when you do the fronts, it has to float above this thing, or so it doesn't touch this. Because without it, I'm not sure, I think the rears don't touch. The rears, you could do it with it, but I still use these just in case. I use two of them. Bam, and impact it in. In order to install these, you just have to take off the axle nut to 32. If you're running rear rotors, or rear disc conversion like I am, then you're going to take off the rotor, and take off the caliper, and then take off the whole hub, the whole hub assembly. And then the new wheel bearings, they're right here. They're built in on the rear. So they're a lot easier to replace compared to the fronts. I did buy the fronts, the fronts are in here. But I'm not doing the fronts yet because I still have to do uh, my motor swap. So I might put them in when I do my motor swap so I don't have to worry about uh, doing another alignment and all that. Yeah, let's get to it. We are going to, well, I'll just try to explain step by step for you guys. First off, want to apologize for the sound that the hammer is going to be making. I'm going to move it back a bit. Take the hammer. You're going to need to hit it. But I'm right going to put your foot on it because uh, the hub doesn't, so the hub doesn't move. And okay, when you just start hitting it, there you go. That studs out. And then you're just gonna proceed on to everything else. Next thing you guys wanna do, of course, is open up the ARP studs. You wanna do one by one, of course. Slide it under, put the two washers. You don't really need them for the rears, but just do it. Put some the techie on. Spin it in by hand. If you have impact, use an impact. If you don't, then you're just gonna do it by hand. Doing it by hand does take a little longer, but with an impact, it makes life easier. Then you just shoot it in. All right, a little more. All right, and after that, loosen it. Pick this off. Pick this off, the washers. Now, you see it, the stud is seated in. 
So what you want to do is get the flattest possible, which is like that, because these things right here, the little grooves and the studs, they're what keeps it uh, seated in. So next one, same exact thing. Shoot it in. Now we got two in. Oh, this one, you see that? Let me focus, focus. You can see it's a little gapped. What you wanna do is just shoot it in a little more. And I'll leave the lignite in there. Now it's fully seated. Now it's gonna do the same thing on the other two. There you go. Now to install these. Just make sure to tighten down the hubs and then yep extended those studs the extended studs are finally on and I just went for a test drive and the the wheel bearings are good on these ones of course because they're brand new but I didn't get to state in the beginning of the video on how to know if your wheel bearings are shot or anything when you're driving on the freeway or locally you can hear like a howling sound coming from like wherever it is from Miles from, of course, the driver's side rear. It was making a loud howling sound whenever, um, you know, I go in neutral and just let it roll. But now with the new hub and, well, the studs don't matter, but with the new hub, it does not howl anymore. But that is how you know. And also one way you can know is if the wheel shakes, like you can check up the car and the whole wheel shakes. Uh, I forgot if it's left or right, but yeah, I normally just know by it howling. And the studs, well, I'm not running spacers on here. I still need to do the fronts. But the fronts, I'm still... Oh, that barbie saw is my bumper. It's loose. The fronts I need to do after, and then I need to get these spacers. Studs punched out on the spacers, which of course I can do it at home. And then put the ARP studs on the hub, but I'm ordering a new hub for that. And then the tie rods, I still gotta do the tie rods. I think that was like three weeks ago that I showed you guys that I got tie rods. But I just didn't do it yet. I'm waiting, because I'm gonna get a motor. If I get a JDM B18C, then I could easily get it and then a lot of my friends were saying how you, all you need is a USD intake manifold and then just reuse my EX harness because my car is an EX and uh, little things here and there but that's all I need and I think I need uh, the P72 AO4 no immobilizer or whatever but I think the 98 motors don't have an immobilizer I'm not too sure I forgot but I already know what I want but I'm definitely gonna go through HMO HMO because they have the motors there and I can trust them compared to any other place. Other places are selling cheaper, but HMO, they have all the paperwork and everything, and I want it to be legit, so HMO, it is. I'm not gonna be getting the motor next week or tomorrow. Probably, I say within a month or two, because the motor is not cheap. It is 3,200, or 31 to 3,200, I forgot, with just a regular transmission, but I want to get LSD. So that's another 350 on top from HMO, so roughly 3,400, 3,500. So I'm gonna be getting a BTC5. I mean, what the f C5. Ooh, that'd be nice. BTC with a LSD transmission from HMO. So that's roughly 34, 3500. And not now, but it will come eventually. I'm not gonna buy anything else for the car, like unless it needs it. Like my axle actually just fucked up on me. You guys can see all that uh, grease. It literally just messed up on me today. 
I pull up to Daryl's house and then next to know my axle was shot. So I just need to buy a new axle and redo that or replace CV boot, but I'm picky so I'll replace the whole axle. So B18C with LST transmission. Stay tuned for that. That is what I'm gonna be getting. I don't know when, but I know HMO always has it in stock. So that is the motor I'm going with now because you know just learn about what to get barred and stuff, get it legally done. So now a B18C with the LST transmission is what I'm going is what I'm gonna get for sure. So stick around guys. I don't know when, but I will get it within a month or two. You guys will see the whole process. I'm gonna pick up the motor, leave on the engine stand, rebuild it, transmission. Uh, might be good, of course. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I might crack the case open and replace the input shock bearings and all that. But for now, the single jingle still doing no work. I still need to do a smog test on this car. That's why I still have the stock intake box on now. I need to put my stock headers back on and then put a brand new, well, um, this is a magnet flow cat that I've been saving every time I go up for smog. This is what I did today. I'm just kicking it. But yep, I'm gonna go home, edit this video. And stay tuned for more videos. I always fucking say that because it's true. Have a wonderful Sunday and comment, like, subscribe. This is up to you guys. Share this video if you guys want. And yeah, so I'll see whoever's playing on Forza. See you guys on Forza. Peace out.